This year, we do have significant tax changes that go into effect, especially in many of the interest and income investing states. So do we change our stock strategy this year because of those things and the geopolitical stuff that seems to be ratcheting up around the world? I don't think so. I mean, looking back at 2017, for example, uh, what helped lift the equity markets? We had synchronized global economic growth. We had very low interest rates and we had incredibly low volatility. At least for the time being, it appears that those drivers still remain in place heading into early 2018. We think markets will continue to grind higher uh, over the course of this year, albeit with much more muted returns. Where I caution investors is thinking that the returns we saw in 2017, for instance, are likely to be repeated. I don't think that is the case. We've had one down year for the S&P 500, David, in the last, I think, 13 or 14 when you factor in dividends. Obviously, that year was 2008, where the S&P fell yes. more than 30%. A, a big down. Yeah, it was a big down, but the point is 13 out of 14 up. I understand the global economic story, the reflation story, the earnings story, but come on. How much more gas really could this investment rally have in the tank? Still some gas left in the tank, but the, the rule of thumb is in any single calendar year, it's usually better than 13% or less than 7%. It's rare that the Wall Street strategists are right, Brian, 9 to 10% annual returns. So in, in 2018, I'm more likely to be tempered. Uh, as Joe said, don't fall in love with your 2017 statement. Enjoy it on January 1st, but here we are on January 2nd. You pointed out inflection points don't always happen at the beginning of a new year, but I do think in 2018 where you want to still find valuation and opportunities would be small and mid-cap stocks. Beneficiaries of tax reform and the valuations are compelling. Emerging markets had a good recovery in 2017. I think that's a longer term play that looks to go forward. And to really get to those high single digit returns in, in portfolios, you simply have to be more proactive, finding companies with attractive yields, growing their free cash flow and their dividends, and that, I think, is going to be the best formula to getting you closer to 10% when the market itself may only offer 5 or 6 So, Joe, do we key in on, on the notion that there is global synchronized growth for the time being and, and change the rotation? I mean, as David had mentioned, you don't want to fall in love with your statement to your detriment. Should we start rotating out of sectors like technology and going more heavily into energy, which has really seen a pickup in the past month, or materials, which are basically on fire um, thanks to the China data overnight? Yeah. Well, I think overall, we continue to favor technology. We continue to like sectors that stand to benefit from a very strong uh, consumer backdrop. From a regional exposure, I think we have to recognize what's happened here with this tax legislation and how that's likely to impact, uh, in my opinion, in a material way, uh, U.S. stocks. I mean, you think about the S&P 500, just for example, an effective tax rate at about 25, 26 percent. By most estimates, conservatively, that's coming down to about 20 percent. So I do think that U.S. stocks in particular should benefit from this. And I think when you look at the various sectors, there, is going to be, uh, there are going to be some winners and losers. Over the course of this year, we expect correlations within the equity markets to continue to come down, just given where valuations are, where we are in the cycle. And I think active management is really going to be the place to be. Why do you say that? I mean, the history tells me that, that I ought to just basically make the core holding in my portfolio uh, a, a total market index fund. I, I, I can think weigh there's in on wrong. this, too. Yeah. Look, I think there's nothing wrong with having passive exposure in your portfolio, but just recognize what it is that you're getting exposure to. You're getting exposure to beta, simply the market moving up, the market moving down. And in a year like 2017, beta cer certainly served you well. But heading into 2018, where we expect returns to be a little bit more muted, we expect volatility, which has been non-existent, over the past couple of years to finally start to pick back up, I think you're going to start to see winners and losers within the equity markets and having a quality bias within your portfolio, recognizing which companies and which sectors stand to benefit from this tax legislation will serve you a little bit better. David, your final thought. Well, and beware of the portfolio manager who says it's a great active uh, time to be a, a stock picker. Never say that. Uh, having recognized that in a mid single digit type return, where it's no longer heads I win, tails I don't lose. There will be a greater separation of good companies from mediocre companies. 
that should play well to the active stock investor. It did in 2017 to some degree. I think it's going to be even more prevalent in 2018 for the active investor when returns are more muted. My parents didn't raise me to play for a tie. I think it's going to be a better active year for investors this year. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.